John Deere is saying not to use your 1025R, 2025R, 1023E, and is telling the dealers not to sell them. I'll tell you all the details that they state in this uh, notice, and then I'll talk through some history of similar issues, and then some opinions. So let's get right to it. This is a marketing bulletin sent to dealer sales managers, dealer service managers, finance managers, and at the bottom it says, please forward to all appropriate personnel. I was made aware of this through two different ways uh, yesterday evening. Uh, one was Ken Bolt on Hooks, and he was actually forwarding me a video from a YouTuber named Woodridge Creek. I think his first name is John. Uh, but Woodridge Creek, he deserves a shout out for breaking this story. Dealers are instructed not to sell, deliver, or demonstrate any 1023E, 1025R, or 2025R tractor made between November 1st, 2017, September 30th, 2022. The front bell crank of the brake linkage could crack and fail. I'll get into that and show you a little bit of that as we go along. Because of this issue, none of the machines indicated above should be sold, delivered, or demonstrated until this issue has been corrected. A mandatory safety product improvement program product recall is being developed to address this issue. When it's ready to be released, dealers will be notified via PIP bulletin. Additionally, all customers of record will be mailed a customer safety letter. In the meantime, if a customer asks about this issue, they should be advised not to use the machine until the MSPIP has been completed. After it's been completed, the machine can be used, the stop sale is removed, dealers can sell, deliver, and uh, demo the vehicle. <laughs> In bold, note, it is illegal to sell a recalled product until it has been repaired. So November 1st, 2017 to September 30th of 2022, that is almost five years, okay? I'm just gonna make a rough guess here and say that there are 200,000 tractors affected. I think this will probably be the biggest recall that Deer has ever dealt with. This is by far the largest selling tractor line and since we're hitting all the 23Es, 25Rs, um, in this one series platform. Um, yes, the 2025R is a one series platform. But anyway, since we're hitting all of that, this is a huge number of tractors and it will be interesting to see how this plays out because it is so large. I, it, they, they say in here that they're going to contact every uh, owner of record, okay? So you may be an owner of record and no longer have your tractor, or you may have a tractor and not be the owner of record. If you have one of these machines, do reach out to your dealer and become an owner of record, if nothing else. That way you can be notified on this. That's easy to do. Um, just uh, let your dealer know. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper and try to help you with some questions that I'm already seeing on Facebook, on greentractortalk.com, other places. Uh, one question is, how do I know the date my tractor is manufactured? It, it says specifically November 1st, 2017, the September 30th, 2022. Well, you can't know uh, just by looking at your tractor. The serial number doesn't tell you the exact date, but it does tell you the year. So if your tractor was calendar year built 18, 19, 20, 21, you know it's affected. If it's built in 17 or 22, you'll have to call your dealer and, and see if it's affected. I believe it's the 11th digit in the serial number. I could be wrong, but if so, I'll correct it right here. And we'll post a list of how those letter codes match to the calendar build year. And I suspect another way to know if your tractor is affected is to look at this bell crank on the uh, brake assembly itself and see if it's made of this cast aluminum. I think that's the issue. I, I think at some point they chose to use this cast aluminum and uh, for, for some reason it's breaking for a lot of people. We've got some photos here of folks showing it, it, it breaking. You can see where it's located on the tractor. It's on the right side just inside the hydraulic pedals even though it's the left brake pedal that is the one that, that causes the issue. So when you press your left brake pedal, there's a shaft that goes all the way under the tractor to the right-hand side, and then that's what uh, actually applies the brake. 
Several Facebook commenters had the same thought that I did. Oh, you mean my tractor has a brake? Well, they were obviously joking, but I get it. I don't use the brake pedal much on these tractors, so in, and a lot of people don't. I mean, when you let off the hydrostat pedal, it stops, right? The only time you really need the brake is if you don't have the tractor in gear or you're on a really steep slope, so much so that letting off the pedal is not enough to keep it from moving. That's, that's very, very rare. And then sometimes you have a, a, a detail where you don't want to roll forward at all and, and you might need the brake there. Again, I think these are braking because they're made out of cast aluminum. I had a 2014 model before this. I, I wish I still had access to it because I could see how that one's different. I suspect it was fabricated steel and then they went to this cast aluminum part to save money and now they're, they're finding issue with it. So when I look at shop.deer.com, I can't tell if this piece is fabricated or if it is still that cast piece. I do notice that it's priced at $86 instead of the 103 to 110 that I saw from other Facebook posters, so maybe it's changed. It does show that it's available from my local dealer. I just can't be sure that the problem is fixed. The puzzling part is that the newest machines don't apparently show the issue, so I don't understand. Now with this pip, they don't have a specific solution yet. If yours is broken, I would recommend replacing it, even if it's $86 out of your pocket, but talk to your dealer first. If it's not broken, I think I would hold off a few days before buying the replacement part. Maybe we'll learn more. I'll provide updates at tractortimewithtim.com as we learn more about this issue. I don't know if you're going to be reimbursed for it. I just, I don't have any insight on that. Clearly you can wait and you will get a replacement part at some point. I even saw one guy who fabbed his own or had a, had a, had a friend fab his own. I got a photo of that here. Now let's look back in history a little bit, at least in my memory. I've got a couple of things I remember that I think are relevant. One is that when the second generation 2025R came out, I don't think it affected the 1025R at the time, but I, you guys can correct me in the comments. Early in that 2025R development, uh, the assembly, they over-tightened some of the ROPS bolts. And so there was a stop cell briefly for that, and the dealer actually could fix that. So it wasn't something that went to very many customers. I don't know how many customers it went to. But that was a safety-related PIP like this one, and they just had to replace those ROPS bolts and tighten them to spec instead of over-tightening them. The other background that I think is relevant for us to discuss is the air filter or air cleaner bracket issue. Um, the air cleaner from all of the 1025Rs from say 2013 whenever it was introduced all the way up to 2016, 17 in there had the air filter mounted right on top of the valve cover and that caused problems. The very first proposed fix, an actual implemented fix on that was to make the air cleaner bracket thicker so that it didn't break due to all the vibration of the engine is what was causing this. Well, making the air cleaner bracket thicker caused the valve cover itself to break and um, would open the valve cover and potentially destroy the engine. So why is that particular issue, the air filter, why, why, does, why is that relevant to today's issue? Well, that kind of as a segue into the opinion section. Now before I get too deep in my opinions, I should make a point of saying, look for this bell crank and see if it's broken right now. It could be broken on your tractor and you not even know it. It's, it's located right here as you can see in this image. Make sure it's not broken. Make sure your brake pedal works and is effective. Uh, get yourself on a, a, a safe slope somewhere and, and take it out of gear and, you know, just, just test to make sure your brake works fine uh, before you make any more use of the tractor. So in that case, I, if your brake pedal is broken, I agree, do not use the tractor. I, I think that's a, that's a risk that's, that's not worth taking and it's something that can be easily repaired, right? So, so that, that would be the first statement there, the first action. Now, if your pedal is not broken, I'm getting into that opinion section a little bit, right? So every person's comfort level is gonna be different. Um, for me, I'm a flatlander. I am gonna choose to continue to use my machine. I also feel like I'm relatively experienced and just from a reflex standpoint, if, if I do get to rolling out of control, I'll put my loader down, I will, I will 
put my attachment down, I'll be able to to get my machine stopped. It's, it's just how I think at this point. However, if you're new with your machine or some of your operators in your own yard are inexperienced and, and when they get to rolling a little bit you know, out of control, they get, they get scared and they're not, not gonna be able to handle it properly, well, that's a good time not to, yeah, you know, consider, consider being a little uh, selective on that, especially if you have a lot of slopes. We have my friend Levi in Tennessee, who's on serious, serious slopes. Now he has a 1026R, he's not gonna have this issue, but if you have a steeply sloped properly, property, then I, I, would, I would suggest you uh, maybe be a little more proactive on this issue than what I'm gonna choose to be. I brought up the air cleaner, air filter pip from years ago, just to kind of illustrate the differences between a major safety issue and another major issue, the, an issue that could destroy the engine of your tractor, right? But it's being handled totally differently, right? In, in one case, we're talking about dollars and cents and, you know, how are we going to deal with this broken engine if, in, in, in the worst case scenario, right? In the case of this brake pedal and everything, it's safety. So it's no question that this one's being handled differently because of the safety issue. Now one of the underlying themes of this channel is don't be scared of your tractor. We talk about not being scared of doing your own maintenance. We talk about not being fearful of pushing your tractor a little bit. These little tractors will do a lot more than what you might at first think they can do. I don't want you to be scared of killing yourself on this tractor. I, I don't think there's reason for that fear. Um, obviously you need to respect the machine, any machine you need to respect, but I think when you show it that level of respect and you approach it confidently, it's pretty safe to operate these. So I, I just don't want to overstate the risk and it's, it's easy to do that when something comes out like this and that's, that's not what our, our goal is here. We just want to make you aware of it. Who knows, you may have said, hey, my brake pedal's not working, I didn't know what's going on, uh, I'll worry about it next week. In, in that sense, if we can get you to call your dealer now, that's, that's worth the video here. On the other hand, you may have heard about this and you may be fearful of using your tractor and hopefully after this you can say, well, in my scenario, I think, I think it's, it's going to be okay. What, what, whatever you decide, uh, ultimately you're responsible for your decisions. I just wanted to provide the information. Thanks again to Woodridge Creek and Ken from Bolt on Hooks for uh, pointing this information out to us. We are certain now that it's legit. Um, there's, there's tons of information about this on Facebook and on YouTube and on greentractortalk.com. Recommend that you, you get involved in some of those groups. You'll learn a lot about your machine. It'll help you as an operator. And continue watching Tractor Time with Tim. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the Most High over all the earth. Hey, I found a four-leaf clover. That should be lucky for us, right?